Hello and welcome back to the channel. I haven't done one of these for a while and certainly not one about Kingdom Come Deliverance, but some new news and information has been published by Warhorse on Twitter um, that may lead to clues as to what the next Kingdom Come game is going to be about. Now, for a long time, I believed that it's not going to be a follow on from Kingdom Come Deliverance, but it's going to be a completely new game with new characters in a different location. Now the information that's come out, the clues, do confirm that. Now a photograph has been found on the internet of a warhorse developer working on a game specifically on a, on a village that was not in the original game. Now this could just be an old photograph and it's a village that decided not to include but I don't think it is. I think it's a new photograph and I think it's a location that will be in the new game and this location is very special and could give very clear clues as to about where the game is set, when it's set and what's happening at that time. Now the village in question is, and I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrong, Mr. Neats. Now it's a village that no longer exists and in the 1960s a archaeological dig was carried out to find out whether the village was there at all and they found it. And the village included a fortress with a massive stone foundations, was protected by a moat and a drawbridge. Uh, the um, the village itself dates back to the late Stone Age, where people from Moravian painted pottery culture came to this valley. But what happened to it? Well, in 1468, during the campaign of the Hungarian troops of King Matthias, the town was attacked and destroyed. Now... This is proved by the findings of a large number of arrows, swords, and uh, human remains, um, including the bones of horses. And it all suggests that these were um, warriors on horseback who died here. Now, why was Matthias there? Well, he was on crusade. He was sent by the Pope to restore Bohemia back to the Roman Catholic faith, because at this point they were... Hussites. They were following the teaching of Jan Hus, um, the king of Bohemia at this point was a follower of Jan Hus and he wasn't very popular with the local aristocracy in, in neighbouring countries and he was not popular with the Pope either prior to the crusade or with the new Pope who so we know that in 1468, if Henry was alive at this point, he would be in his 80s. So it is unlikely that he will be a character in this game. And I've believed this for quite a long time. I believe Warhorse has, hint has hinted at this um, a few times within the last couple of years. Now, what is this village and is it important? What is here? We know that the livelihood of the inhabitants of Mr. Neats was agricultural production and cattle breeding. Um, and the burned layers of the village um, was destroyed by fire. There was also evidence of uh, grain production, agriculture, uh, pottery making, and also um, the evidence that there were metallurgists living in the village at the time um, as evidenced by the kilns that have been discovered. Um, so this could suggest that they were um, smelting silver or making weapons, gold maybe, any other kind of metal that would be of value. Um, this could suggest that this was a deliberate target by Matthias to capture this place. If it was silver then it would be rich. Um, if it was metals, any other metals for weapons, then it would be useful for arming his troops, providing swords and armour. So now let's talk about what's going on at the time. 
Um, so in 1468, it's the beginning of the Bohemian-Hungarian War, which lasted for 10 years. It began when the King of Bohemia, uh, King George, was invaded by the King of Hungary, Matthias Corvinus. Matthias invaded with the pretext of returning Bohemia to the Catholicism. At the time, it was ruled by the Hussite King, George of Podebrad. Matthias' invasion was largely successful, leading to his acquisition of the southern and eastern parts of the country. Its core lands, however, centered on Prague, were, ta were never taken. Ultimately, both Matthias and Podebrad would proclaim themselves king, though neither ever acquired all the necessary subordinate titles. When Podebrad died in 1471, his successor, Vladislaus II, continued to the fight against Matthias. In 1478, the war ended following the treaties of Buono and the Olomouc. Upon Matthias' death in 1490, Vladislaus would succeed him as king of both Hungary and Bohemia. So it looks like for a period of 10 years, this conflict went on back and forth. Um, there were disputes between the two leaders about who was king, which means there would be disputes between the different nobles who would be living in the area and would have chosen their own sides so there will be local conflicts between nobles there'll be local conflicts between peasants and there'll be a lot of disarray much like what was going on in kingdom come deliverance when sigismund invaded the area around scallets there'll be banditry there'll be killings there'll be pestilence all similar kind of things uh, but, pen but potentially with two kings vying for control for this area there will be large-scale battles, and this is what we kind of hope that we'll be getting. It's something that was promised in the early stages of development of Kingdom Come Deliverance. We didn't really get. Um, that's understandable considering the budget, but that's fine. Hopefully, with the backing of THQ Nordic, we're going to get that now. Um, and this brings me to who I think we'll be playing. Now, we've done the blacksmith thing with Henry. We've played a peasant. Okay, we've done that. We know what that's like. This appears to be a military target. It has a fortification. The soldiers died here. There was a battle here. So I think we're going to be playing a soldier either probably more likely based in this town. He may have family here. Uh, he may have come from Prague. It's likely he just lives in this town and has become a soldier. So... Um, because of you know the, the usual development of these games, you start with little or no knowledge of playing, of, of fighting, sword fighting, you know, battle, armor, that kind of thing. So I think you're going to be starting pretty low down the levels, a basic soldier with no skills, and early part of the game... Um, You'll be learning the sword fighting skills, um, trading, that kind of thing, and communicating with the with the local population and learning about what's going on here before the attack, very similar to what happened in Scalettes. Um, and I'd like to think that you may have some kind of um, decision as to what kind of soldier you could be playing. Um, you could be a general foot soldier who specializes in swords or maces. Um, you could be a spearman, so you um, develop towards being uh, a spearman and being adept at that. You could be learning how to be an archer and then develop into um, crossbow combat um, and working your skills up on that. Or you could be uh, a mounted troop and learning skills so i think there could be a lot of options here um, a lot of immersion into the life of a soldier in the bohemian army at this point there could even be the possibility of having early gunpowder troops at this point which would be amazing if we could do that and hopefully um knowing the team at warhorse it would be historically accurate so um firing a a gunpowder weapon at this time would be slow and would be extremely inaccurate um but would probably startle a few horses um so this is what i think is going on i may do a few more videos about the the period the um 
what's going on at the time, the different belligerents that are involved, King George, um, Attius, um, what's going on with the popes, um, why the Hussites, that kind of thing. So I'll keep you posted. I'll hopefully be able to do some more videos at the um, in the next few days. Um, but we are in lockdown, so I've got children in the house. So it may not be as quick as I'd like. So thank you for listening. I hope this is what's going to happen. It looks really interesting. Um, goodbye for now.